What's up everyone, welcome back. Today I wanted to make a video on what's in my backpack during residency. My backpack is pretty minimalistic, but it's one of the most important things that I carry around during residency. What I have inside uh, is usually just my laptop, a couple of books, and my essentials that I use to get along with the day. The backpack that I use is the Mancro. Um, it's a laptop backpack. It's a fairly inexpensive backpack, it's about $25. I got, it, I got this off of Amazon. It has about 20,000 reviews on Amazon. I saw it, um, I like the color. It's uh, charcoal gray. And um, it's, it's perfect for students, college students, medical students, residents. It's inexpensive first and foremost. It has enough pockets. So it has about three, three pockets. The main pocket, one on the front, and a smaller one um, at the very front. In the main pocket, I usually store my laptop. So the laptop that I use is the MacBook Air. This is the 2019 version. I'll talk more about this later, but I always carry a sleeve. Having a laptop is essential during residency because uh, whenever you have clinic, so in my program we have half days of clinic. My clinic is on Wednesdays and we're required to bring our own laptops in, especially to access the EMR, meet with patients, talk with them, and to document everything that you discussed. So it's uh, absolutely essential that I have my laptop uh, with me at all times, along with my charger. Next, I always carry around, especially as an intern, one of my favorite books, the Online MedEd Intern Guide. So this book has saved me so many times during intern year. It's one of my favorite books during residency. It has everything you could possibly need. I highly suggest every incoming intern in residency to read this book, go through it, buy hard it, um, and it's a must. Um, I love all the chapters, especially the drugs. When you're on the floors, patient has constipation. You want to know what drugs to give them. Patient has diarrhea. What do you give them? Um, patient has hypertension. What drugs do you start with? What should you increase by? What is the dosage? Patient's complaining of sleep. And this is a common thing. Especially on night float, uh, patient cannot sleep. Um, especially if they're elderly, you want to avoid certain drugs such as benzos and uh, certain things like Benadryl. Um, you want to stick to other drugs that are less, uh, far less sedating for them. And this book has everything. It has um, everything as an intern. Um, um, you can, it's straight there. You don't. It's not like up to date, where you have to read um, almost a page, a page and a half to find the answer. Um, every page is marked uh, in the chapter. You go and you find it. Especially uh, how I used this book was after admitting a patient, I would go through and I would read it. I always carried it around with me. I put it in my um, uh, uh, jacket, and I would always have it with me. Next, I have my. Emra um, Antibiotic Guide. So this is one of my favorite books as well. Whenever I'm uh, admitting a patient that needs antibiotics, I always flip through and I go, so it's organized by chapters. And um, each chapter you can see, um, such as cardiovascular, GI, GU, pulmonary. If I have a patient with pneumonia, what antibiotics should I start them on? If I have a patient with a urinary tract infection, say um, that they've failed outpatient therapy, what should I put them on? And this book is very comprehensive. It's uh, very standard. You can also get the app. I chose to buy this book. It's about $20 on Amazon. The app is also about $20, but I highly suggest having the book just as a physical copy. Um, it's far easier, far faster for me at least to go through. Next is something that um, I did not know about before starting residency, but this is a, a clinical documentation um, improvement guide. So you, you might find this in your hospital, but it'll tell you how to write your notes, how to label certain things, such as what are the criteria for SIRS, what are the criteria for sepsis, um, and if a patient comes in with shortness of breath, you know, you should probably write ac acute respiratory failure, or if they're desaturating, you should probably write acute hypoxic respiratory failure. Um, different things that, um, that that's important for documentation, especially for coding. You want to get the wording right, especially for CMS, uh, Medicare and Medicaid. This book tells you everything. Um, what are the criteria for malnutrition? Um, whether the patient had it on admission or not. Um, pneumonia, you know, what is the criteria for pneumonia? What is the severity of pneumonia? What is the type of uh, CHF? Is it systolic? Is it diastolic? Um, and all of this is very important. To me, this, this book really completes residency. It's, it's very small. You know, um, my hospital gives this around and I really enjoy reading through this and you really get a, a view into how coding works, how you should document your notes, whether inpatient or outpatient. It's crucial to have this book.
um, to know how you're coding and um, to know what to write down in your notes so that uh, insurance will understand it and you'll be reimbursed. Next, I always carry a small notebook. Um, this is, I use a different notebook every month and I write my notes. Um, and usually it's, it's very small and I always have this with me. Whenever you're going through rounds and your attending tells you something, I always pull this out and I write on it. And I make sure to write down important things, questions I have, um, things I want to ask my attending, things I want to ask my seniors. Um, when I'm, in, I'm admitting a patient and uh, I don't know what to do, um, I always write down what questions I have and I make sure I, I find one of my seniors, I go, I go through it with them. I always, at the end of the day, I sit down with someone, whether it be a co-intern, a senior, a resident, an attending, I always ask them whatever questions I've written down, um, as well as I go back and I look up on UpToDate uh, or Amboss or different resources, uh, things that I have questions on. So that's it for this bag. Um, so we're in, you, you have a laptop compartment right here. So this is where you put your laptop, you have plenty of storage. So let's move on to the um, big zipper in the front. So in this big zipper, first I have my stethoscope. So this is um, a Littman uh, Classic 3. Uh, it's one of my favorite stethoscopes. It's pretty in inexpensive. It's about $98 on Amazon. Highly recommend it. Um, especially as an intern, it's, this is perfect. It's lightweight. I love the color. I love black. Um, and I highly recommend almost everyone that I know, uh, especially as residents, everyone owns a Littman. They're the gold standard of stethoscopes. I know you can find stuff cheaper, but try to save up. Try to buy yourself a Littman. Um, I, I always had other stethoscopes. Um, I never really had a Littman um, in medical school, but it makes a big difference. Um, when you do have a real Littman and you use it, you can hear things much, much clearer. Next, I have my goggles. So these are the goggles that I use every day. Um, I put them on whenever I go into COVID rooms, uh, contact, isolation precautions, whenever I'm doing procedures such as central lines, um, arterial lines. Um, I always make sure I have my goggles. You want to make sure that you protect yourself, um, especially as a resident. You're going to be exposed in, the, in a hospital to many th different things. So we want to make sure you have a pair of goggles. Next, um, this is very important. So this is one of my favorite charging wires. This is the Anchor 3-in-1. So what it does is you have your uh, iPhone Lightning cable right here. You have a micro USB and you have a USB-C. So depending on whichever um, object I want to charge, I just pop this on and I can charge it. And now I don't have to worry about carrying different wires. Um, this one wire can charge basically everything I own. And um, one of my favorite wires, highly recommend you get it. Next, I have my AirPods. Um, this is important. I love to listen to music, especially as I'm writing notes, um, when I'm on the rounds, or when I'm just um, chilling out and waiting for stuff to get back. I love to listen to music. Next, um, so these are Lang flashcards. I have a binder full of flashcards and it's a bunch of drugs. And so it goes through um, their side effects, the mechanism of action, um, what it's used for, what its classification is, and on the back you're going to find a clinical scenario and, um, and, and it tells you how or when you would use this drug. I love to carry these things around um, just to quiz myself. I always grab a couple before I start the day and I, I try to get through at least uh, four or five of these cards uh, through a day. Whenever you have five minutes in between morning report, before noon conference, during lunch, um, I always try to read on a couple of these cards. Next, I uh, have a band-aid. This is very important. I always make sure I have a couple of uh, four-color pens. Um, you can find these on Amazon. Next, we move on to the smallest zip. So in this zip, I always have my pager. So I usually don't use the um, belt holder for the pager. I usually just carry it around like this. I find that it's much smaller, much, much less bulkier and I just love having this in my pocket. Um, I do set it to the highest tone, make sure I hear it. Next.
next I have my ID card and um, one of the things I highly recommend you do is always have one of these attachable pens to your ID card so it's a small pen but it's a pen that I'll always have with me um, and you know as a resident you're gonna be losing pens and I highly recommend um, you try to attach a pen to your badge um, that's one of the ways I found and I also have this is my favorite pen this is my go-to pen this is the BIC uh, four color so it's a 0.7 millimeter four color pen and each color for me represents something else and I use it all the time especially on sign out and this is one of the ways I stay organized um, if you'd like to know how I use uh, the four color pen um, during sign out and throughout the course of my day to stay organized and more productive um, I have another video linked down below. next this is my pupil gauge um, I always check pupil response especially rapid responses um, whenever you're uh, responding to patients I always carry a pupil gauge with me Next is my pulse ox. So this is very important. I highly recommend every resident to carry a pulse ox. It can be a basic one. It can be this one's probably ten dollars on Amazon. But always check your pulse ox first thing in the morning for your patients because you need to know um, how much oxygen they're on and if you can turn down their oxygen or not. If you don't turn down their oxygen, they'll re re remain on those two or three or four liters eternally. So you want to make sure that if they're tolerating it. Um, turn down their oxygen, you know, tell your attending how much they're you know, saturating. Um, see if you can um, see if the patient actually needs oxygen or not. And especially when I respond to codes, um, it takes a while to get a uh, pulse ox in, so I always love to carry my own. Um, and then I have chapstick. Can't emphasize this enough. Um, chapstick is very, very important, um, especially during the winters, but I always make sure I have it. So there you go, guys. This is the Mancro um, laptop bag, one of my favorite bags. Very light, um, very thin. Um, I highly recommend you getting this bag. And no matter what you put inside of it, I, uh, as a resident, try to keep it as uh, minimal as possible. Stuff that you'll easily remember and um, the absolute necessary during words. I hope you found this video uh, helpful. I hope to see you again. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.